Okay, uh, my name is Phil Kondax. Uh, I was for uh, somewhat over 20 years the technical director of George Eastman House in Rochester, New York. And in that capacity, I was in charge of the uh, uh, history of the techno technology, most specifically the history of photographic technology. I, I knew Doc uh, uh, probably for about uh, 35 odd years. I was as a teenager uh, when I was still an undergraduate at the University of Rochester. Uh, his son and I uh, went to uh, Belmont where he lived over spring break and uh, spent uh, about a week there. And I in the following years, I took courses from him as well as I went uh, with him on some trips where he was uh, trying out some of his sonar equipment in the Charles River and so on. Uh, the, uh, there was a show about, has opened up some, uh, about, about eight months ago at George Eastman House in Rochester that I initiated, uh, although I retired before the show uh, opened up. Uh, this is one of the most uh, famous areas at MIT is uh, in the electrical engineering building. It's called uh, Stroh Valley. No one knows exactly who first gave it the name, but it's now official. And when the Edgerton Center was created here in uh, Aurora, it was de de decided that they would have their own Stroh Valley. There's no attempt has been made to, in any sense, reproduce a replica of the original, except in spirit. And perhaps we can take a little walk along here and I'll, I can give you some idea of what we're doing here. This first section is called the Aurora Years. And it involves uh, things like his University of Nebraska, laboratory notebooks, uh, some uh, of the equipment that he used while still here in Aurora and perhaps during his summer vacation breaks when he was working as a lineman for the uh, power company, generating company in Aurora. He was very proud of, the fa of his ability to uh, put on a harness and climb uh, high power uh, poles. Uh, there are other odd bits and pieces of equipment here, include a, a spark gap transmitter uh, that he built, uh, along with uh, a little note to the effect that uh, he uh, was received a letter from the government about 1917 that saying that, that he had to take down his antenna because we were at war. And. There are various pictures of him in, <clears throat> as a uh, junior year in uh, playing football. He played right guard as a junior in the um, Aurora High School. Okay. The next three cases are called simply MIT and Stroh Valley. And the objects in here uh, represent some of the, in some cases, prototypes uh, of devices that he built while he was a president, while he was a, uh, a resident uh, professor at MIT. In some cases, equipment he used, for example, uh, in this instance, it's a, an optical rangefinder, a, a war surplus, really, a high-speed movie camera, uh, an experimental strobe light, a uh, very short-duration strobe light used for bird photography. This is interesting. It's the, a remnant of a 2,200-year-old amphora. That's uh, a Greek uh, wine bottle that was uh, found uh, on the bed of the Mediterranean when he was on an expedition with Captain Cousteau. The strobe light in this case uh, had a filter that turned it into an, <clears throat> an infrared 
light. Uh, this enabled it uh, with this type of uh, light, sometimes called black light, you couldn't see a thing. And frankly, we don't know exactly what the purpose for this was, except that uh, it was probably designed, this was the camera that went with it, it was probably designed for some kind of uh, experimental photography because with, with that kind of light, you can, in fact, uh, it's possible to uh, see through fog, and through rem or actually, for that matter, take pictures in total darkness because it involves a portion of the spectrum that is the human eyes are not uh, are not possible are not sensitive to. Uh, the first product that was manufactured uh, from one of Doc's inventions was called the strobe attack. The strobe attack, the word is, was coined by Doc from a combination of stroboscope and tachometer. Tachometer, anybody who has uh, seen a car recently realizes it's designed to uh, indicate uh, the speeds of rotation. Well, with the strobe attack, it was possible by flashing the light at a rotating object to determine how fast it was rotating. And so it was a very useful device for engineers. It was just another, became another important tool in an engineer's uh, bag of devices. Another gadget that uh, is kind of fun, anybody that's seen any of Doc's pictures will see he used bullets uh, smashing through apples or cards. And he, they were caught by this gadget, was simply a bullet catcher. It's filled with sand in the end, so that a uh, bullet gun expels, expends most of its energy. The telephone that was used in Doc's office for many years is seen here, plus a stereo camera and a stereo viewer. There are several items in, in this case that are quite interesting. Uh, Doc had a uh, portable dark room, which would fit small enough to fit into the back of a station wagon. It's too large, however, to fit in these cases. So what we have in here is just simply uh, the kit. He called it his portable developing kit. Uh, it was he could, with this, make develop in the field up to four by five negatives. This was very important because if you consider the fact that a great deal of equipment and time, terrific amount of effort, was expended sometimes to go to a distant spot to make some pictures, and very subtle factors may determine whether you were successful or not. So it was very important, if possible, to develop the picture before you got finished and got back to say, ah, we finally have it, or we don't have it, let's do it again, fellas, before we have to break it all up and, and uh, make the trip back and forth. So we had a little developing kit for the purpose. This uh, huge reflector at the bottom uh, is the kind that was mounted at the tail end of American uh, bombers. And in the center of this, not present, is one of the largest strobe tubes ever made. It was so powerful that you could take pictures of the ground from as high as 5,000 feet. And with this, it was possible for the first time now to take aerial pictures without dropping a magnesium bomb, waiting for it to explode, and then take a picture. And that served a number of purposes. Uh, for one